The average cow can weigh as much as several people, so holding it still for medical procedures would be a challenge, if not for a device called the squeeze chute. The walls of this special stall immobilize the animal from head to tail, while multiple openings allow access for treatment. A squeeze chute is all about restraint. It holds an animal still for medical and other procedures so that no one gets hurt. Key to the design are a front gate that closes around the animal's head and a cage-like structure with a squeeze wall that contains the rest of the body. Production starts with a big coil of steel. As it unwinds, rollers straighten it and a blade cuts it into sheets. The sheets head into a laser cutting station. The laser cuts out the same part numerous times, producing many from one sheet. It's all computer controlled. The part being produced is a component of the side exit gate. They form more steel into tubing. An operator then loads the tubing into a bending machine. It wraps it around dies to shape it into one of the chute's access hoops. It cuts the ends of the hoop and ejects it. An automated system transfers the hoops to a rack. A worker arranges the hoops on the upper half of one of the chute's side frames. The jig serves as a template for the placement of the hoops. He welds the bottom of the hoops to hinges on the frame. These clips are for opening or locking the hoops. He welds one to the top of each access hoop. To vaccinate an animal, the operator can simply reach through the hoops. If greater access is needed, the hoops can be opened. He assembles a panel to the bottom of the second side frame. He welds clips to the top so that this panel can be opened for access to the lower part of the animal. He hinges the panel to the base of the frame. Next, a machine bends steel tubing against a circular form. After the first bend, the worker repositions the tubing so the machine can make the second one in the correct location. The tailgate frame has taken shape. With the frame in a jig, a worker welds vertical bars and diagonal linkages to it. He also assembles a metal shield to the lower half to keep the cow's hooves safely inside. Holes have been drilled in both ends of the chute floor. They'll be used to move one wall inward to tightly contain the animal. They erect the chute's steel skeleton. With a hoist for help, the worker transfers the tailgate to the structure. With the lift supporting it, he guides the top onto the squeeze chute framework. He welds the structure together. The next part is the squeeze wall. He attaches it to the structure. He opens the tailgate to test the clearance and assembles a steel panel to the lower half of the squeeze wall. He mounts the other side panel with the exit gate to the structure. He hinges it to the tailgate frame and welds it to the frame at the top. He pulls the lever to verify that the side gate operates smoothly. He opens the tailgate again to check the clearance. He then moves the squeeze side through the various settings. He makes adjustments if needed to ensure that the squeeze wall is properly aligned at each notch. With multiple access points, there are many ways to approach a steer in a squeeze chute. They dip the entire structure in a paint vat. This ensures even coverage. The head gate has been specially contoured to hold the animal's head in position. The employee slides rubber grippers onto the operating handles. And he applies the brand graphics. This squeeze chute is now ready to immobilize. The chute locks the animal in position 
and it has no choice but to stay still. Until about 30 years ago, boat propellers were mainly made of steel or aluminum. Then they tested the waters with composite propellers. Made from nylon resin and fiberglass, they're lightweight and don't corrode. And in certain models, broken blades can be replaced. With composite propellers, there's another way to move forward on the water. These props are the latest way to convert rotational motion into thrust. Production starts with a computer design. This one is for a houseboat propeller. The design will drive the machinery that manufactures the molds. This is the raw material. Pellets that are half fiberglass, half resin. They place them in a dryer to remove moisture. The operator takes a sample of the dried pellets. He weighs the pellets and then heats them to evaporate more moisture. The difference indicates how much moisture has been removed. The amount that remains is very small. They'll now use these two-part metal molds to form the pellets into propeller blades. It's a process that takes just a minute and a half. The molding machine melts the pellets and a large feed screw forces the molten material into the mold. The composite material solidifies and the operator removes the newly formed propeller blade. The process leaves a piece of unwanted material known as the sprue. The sprue is composite material that hardened as it flowed into the mold. Once cut off, it falls into a bin to be recycled into the next composite propellers. The trimming of the sprue turns the propeller into a functional part. They'll mold composite material around an aluminum core to create the hub. The hub fabrication starts with an extruded bar of aluminum, which a bandsaw cuts to size. Each piece will serve as one core. Using a tool with a sharp, curved blade, he trims off the little rough bits left by the saw. These rough bits are known as burrs, so this process is known as deburring. Once the edges are smooth, he attaches clips to the three wings. These clips will be used to center the core in the mold. The worker slides the core into the mold and the clips hold it in a precise position. He activates the machine. Molten fiberglass and resin material flows into the mold cavity and encapsulates the aluminum core. It also forms channels for the insertion of the propeller blades. Trimming will fine-tune the shape. A computerized milling machine moves the hub into position for trimming. A computer-driven drill bores into the center to open up the hole. The next operation will carve teeth that will mate to corresponding ones on the motor shaft. This is called broaching. A machine pulls a spiraling tool called a brooch through the center hole of the hub. The tool carves through the composite layer and into the aluminum core to cut the teeth. Here's a close-up look at those teeth. Now it's time for all the parts to come together. The assembler slides the blades into the grooves in the hub. The grooves hold them precisely in place. He taps them with a hammer to further entrench them. A part called a rear cap finishes it off. For an inside look, they've cut a propeller open. The cutout reveals how the composite material has become one with the aluminum core. And now, a test. The technician attaches a chain to a blade and, using a hydraulic ram, applies pressure. He measures the breaking point. At one and a half tons of force, it's significant. If a blade breaks, a new one can be installed in the hub. 
This composite boat propeller has taken about 20 minutes to manufacture. Once attached to the motor shaft, it should last for years. The fun has only just begun.